Hey, so Father Taylor here, and uh, today it's a real great privilege to uh, be able to talk to with, uh, with Kara Marshall. Kara, how are you doing? I'm doing well. How are you? I'm, I'm doing well. I pulled you out of your uh, work day, so thank you for giving up some of your time. So Kara, so a, a bunch of people know you, and they know that you're on the vestry, uh, but I'm sure there are some people who are like, who is Kara Marshall? You know, Where did she come from? So for the benefit of folks who don't know you, when did you start coming to Trinity? Um, I started coming to Trinity in the parking lot in the summer of 2020. <laughs> it was shortly after we moved to uh, Granby, Connecticut. I'd been living in Boston and I knew I needed a church and I wanted to find a place that was meeting in person. And I showed up and met you all in the parking lot. Yeah. Well, so you came because of the beautiful organ and the stained glass windows or something. Yeah. So. <laughs> I came because I needed a community. Needed a community. Well, that's a great reason to come. And uh, you're married? I'm married um, to my husband, Philip. Yes. Um, and, and it looks like you guys live in kind of an historic house. Yes. Uh, we we're looking for an 18th century house on two or more acres of land. I'd been living in Boston for, you know, about 13, 14 years, um, got, you know, married a couple of years before we moved and we wanted to come home to Connecticut. I grew up in the state of Connecticut uh, and we knew we wanted a historic house and we found the right place in Granby. Well, well that's great. And I know because we have spoken before that and growing up in Connecticut, did you, you've been a, would you call yourself a cradle Episcopalian? Um, yes, I was technically baptized in my grandparents' Lutheran church in Florida, but uh, ever since then, I've been going to an Episcopal church. Uh -huh. And what was the church you remember, like, as a kid? Where was that? Uh, bulk of my life was Christ Church in Guilford, Connecticut. Guilford. And, and how about school? Like, I think you even went to an Episcopal high school? I did. Um, I was very blessed to receive a scholarship to go to the Kent School, uh, oh. which is was founded by an Episcopal monk at the you know early part of the 20th century. So it had very much that kind of regimented um, life where you had, you know, breakfast, and then you went to chapel, and then you went to class, and sports in the afternoon. Um, study at night and chapel on Sunday. And I found that structure really did what well, was really what I needed in, in high school. Interesting structure. So you came to the church because you needed community, which is a little bit of structure there. And you've really, you've been a person who has benefited from the structure of the Episcopal church and, you know, even the school. How about what did you do when you graduated from Kent? Um, I actually was an exchange student in England for a year. And then I came back and I went to Yale for four years, I studied. Wow, so, so, so let me interrupt you. So when you were in England, did you attend a church in England? Um, yes, the, I was also at a boarding school there and uh, there was the same kind of chapel, um, but it was much less um, lively. It was more, uh, um, the, the Episcopal, the Anglican church is the established church. So people follow the forms, but it, doesn't seem to be as uh, heartfelt sometimes. Interesting, interesting. So, and Yale, I mean, I mean, that's, I mean, you certainly do a lot of Episcopal things at Yale for sure. Well, I was a member of the Episcopal Church at Yale, uh, which was the campus ministry, and it was uh, small, but people wanted to be there, so it was. It was. Yeah, I think the New Haven. Place. I think New Haven has. I forget how many Episcopal churches, but you know that whole like area is like very traditional Episcopalian. Well, so that's interesting. So recently people have been telling their stories. And so I think I've told, you know, some version of my story a bunch of times, how I really didn't grow up in church and that my life, I was really had this like non-church, you know, not in church, but a conversion experience. And then I started attending church. And it wasn't until actually I was in seminary that I started attending an Episcopal church. So I've done everything backwards, but you've done everything correctly. So. So tell me, how is that different? So, so for, to go from a person who's like, yes, I was a, a member of a uh, of an international bike gang or something, to a person who grew up. So tell me about what what it's like 
what your life has been like growing up in church, kind of like starting with a faith that you held on to and how that's grown. So tell me a little about that. Um, it was very important to my mother, especially. She was always very involved. She was also uh, vestry, altar guild, um, you know, very involved in church. And so I had that that modeling of what it was like to be there. I also saw her turn to the church <clears throat> at various times when life was rough. Um, I think also part of my reason for wanting to go to an Episcopal boarding school was because uh, there was there were some tough times in my family in high school. My my parents were struggling with a, a business that wasn't going well, and um, it just I saw for my mother the church be there for her, and I found starting in high school and at other points in my life that uh, the the church had came through, uh, mm. you know, God coming through uh, for me in in this body of the church. And I found even when nothing especially um, difficult was happening in life, uh, I have, I just feel much better. I feel less depressed when I attend regularly and having that form and structure, you know, helps me focus. So let me ask you so a little bit of a question. So, you know, I've got this uh, sense of direction that I, I kind of feel strongly about that because culture has changed so significantly and fewer people attend church, that there's more of a um, responsibility. It was always there, but, but now more than ever, responsibility for disciples to really be able to present God's story and to live as disciples, to be a light of the world. I mean, if they're not coming, you know, we have to be sending. And so, you know, if you grow up in, the people that talk about that more are usually Baptists or Pentecostals, maybe some Presbyterians, and they use the word discipleship. And by that, they often mean like you're involved in a Bible study, you have an accountability group, or you join an evangelism team. But, you know, we, we do it a little differently. We, we cover those bases, but we don't talk about that. So, so tell me about, like, how you would say, like, the structures of an Episcopal church and your experience has, has been the way you've, you've found that is the, 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 the process of discipleship for yourself. Can just talk a little bit about that. Um, I think the form, the... Um... Let's see. Trying to um, well, often for us, when, when you when you question. when you think about coming to an Episcopal church or joining an Episcopal community, what what is the first thing that you're a part of? What would you say? Well, worship for worship. One, you know that right. um, experiencing the presence of Christ through communion, um, and then that fellowship of meeting other people. Um, I have, through my, you know, work, um, I've been involved in energy efficiency. So I've often, in, in later, you know, past 15 years or so, been involved in, in kind of matters of property and trying to help with that. Um, I've been, so I've also been, I think, called to the vestry here and in other places. Um, I have an MBA, so I, I very much think about those structures and, and how to move, move things along. But in my personal experience, it's that um, consistency of knowing the form of worship, knowing that's always going to be there for me. Um, it helps me. I mean, you've talked a little bit about the frame of mind that the familiar language provides. That's very true for me. Um, so knowing that Sunday morning, this is my time to be with God, um, or not my only time, but, uh, you know, it is the time when I'm most focused on that and coming together with other people. It's an easy way to find people with the same kind of focus. Interesting. Interesting. So, uh, you're also, I almost said you also got, uh, uh, you know, tricked into, but no, you'd volunteer to be part of the stewardship group. And so, you know, so we are we are now doing our stewardship season, and our theme this year is uh, that we are stewards of God's story. Uh, so, how in, in your past and, and even now, how has our approach to stewardship 
you know, been helpful or, you know, in terms of how you're understanding about giving? Um, I think the structure and expectation that one um, pledges as part of being a member of that community, uh, that setting that expectation, having that commitment that every week I'm going to give a certain amount. Um, it's, you know, I, I think God calls us to be generous and giving. And I admit that that is something that I sometimes have struggled with. You know, it's easy to um, not see the, you know, it's easy to walk past in whatever form. And, you know, it is, it is the way that, um, you know, God's call to be giving, um, it, it provides that first step to, to give to the church. Um, and, you know, knowing that I'm going to give a certain amount and, um, you know, try to increase that every year. And, you know, it can, it is not always easy, but it is definitely worthwhile to make um, that commitment to God and follow through and then to seek to find other ways to be giving in, in life. Yeah, I, I agree. I, I mean, not all churches have a, like an annual stewardship slash pledge drive. Uh, and some churches just feel, you know, like they do it differently, not that they're wrong. But for me, the fact that I know that every year it's like, here it comes. I have to kind of hold myself accountable for like, there's going to be a card and it's going to have my name on it. And, uh, and how, and I, you know, particularly in, in times when the economy is dicey, you know, or, you know, certainly Kitty and I, when we first got married and we're part of an Episcopal church and living in a three family, we were living check to check just, just for, for groceries. Uh, and so we, we, but we, we made a, an early commitment. It was not exactly like a profound, but, the fact that we started someplace, I think, was helpful, and that as we, you know, kind of went over the years, you know, we've tried to that having to come back again to it's that time for that pledge drive. I have to come to terms with uh, at, at the eight o'clock service when they bring forth the offering. We say this phrase, which comes from the scriptures. It says, "All things come of Thee, O Lord, and of Thine own have we given Thee." That is to say, that all that we have has come from God, and now. I'm acknowledging that by my giving. So I find that structure, you know, that kind of pace of the Episcopal Church, like, here it comes. You know, it's not always your favorite time of year, but it's actually a very good time of year to do that. So I, yeah, I also find that phrase very, um, it resonates very much with me. And, you know, it all comes from God and we're giving back. Um, it's a reminder that that pledge, that con that, regular gift is a reminder of the gifts I've been given mm. um, at various times in my life and every day, <laughs> but well, awesome. you know, the, the presence of God's life, uh, the presence of God in my life and returning something of that to him. Well, great. So uh, I think I've got you on the hook for speaking on, su on Sunday. So uh, we get to see you guys, you see you again and uh, to hear you know, you kind of, you put your story together. And so we'll be praying for you and I'm sure it'll be inspiring. So thanks for spending time today to put this together. Okay. Thank you. All right. All right. Well, thanks to Karen Marshall and we'll see you guys. If you haven't already seen us, we'll see you this Sunday.